bed bug, you won't see them at all. You'll see that they've been there and bit you in the night and they're gone. So how do you know you've got one or the other? Look for the telltale signs of bed bugs. Spots of blood, spots of fecal matter, dry uh, uh, skin castings. Um, there's sometimes a smell with bed bugs that is really, really bad. You walk into a room and go, it's like a fusty smell. That is a sign of bed bugs. Um, look at what you've done recently. Did you buy any second hand furniture from an antique shop? Could have brought them back with you. Great way of bringing bed bugs into your home. It goes through five larval stages before it gets to the adults. Those five stages, each one has to be preceded by a blood meal. So although it's still only a nymph or a youngster, it does still bite, and it has to bite to go through the next stage. Once it's had a blood meal, it then sheds its skin, and these are the uh, skins that you see lying around the room, and they generally look like a bed bug without the bed bug inside it. It's just a small uh, shield-shaped uh, carapace or uh, outer skin, um, brown in colour, it looks like a shadow bed bug skin. Uh, if you see those, pretty much certain you've got bed bugs. Um, you don't very often see a bed bug itself. They are nocturnal. They will wait in your room until the air is still, that the carbon dioxide levels have risen because you're lying and you're sleeping now, and they will feel it's safe to come out. They will then hone in on the carbon dioxide, find your body, crawl onto it, and you won't feel them. So it's not something that says I can feel them crawling on me, you just don't do that. You deep, deep sleep. And they are very good. They have this thing called the circadian rhythm. But they only come out when you're not around, when you're not, a, not awake. Okay, so they're opposite to us. To treat for bed bugs is not an easy process. They're not a quick fix insect to get rid of. And the treatment that uh, anybody's got to do, whether it's a professional pest controller or an amateur doing it themselves at home, has got to be thorough. You have to inspect the property or the room really thoroughly. Look on the mattress. Around the top edge of the mattress is a cord. Pull it back, look in the stitching. If you see evidence of black dots, that's the fecal matter that the bed bug has left behind. You could see the bed bugs in that cord as well, or around that cord, or shells of bed bugs where they've cast their skins off. Okay? Take the mattress, turn it over, have a look underneath. If there's buttons on the mattress, pull them up and have a look underneath the buttons on the mattress. These are the places where the bed bugs will hide. If there's a headboard, all over the headboard they can hide. Wherever there's a fold in the fabric, where there's a joint of wood, if there's a, a gap of up to half a millimetre, a bed bug can get inside it. Turn the bed on its end, have a look underneath it. If there's a um, cover on the underside of it, you need to remove that to get under the bed to have a look in the, in the frame. Take the drawers out of the divan and spray protect sea over all of the inside of the bed. Okay. This is where you get a lot of customers will say it didn't work. The chemicals are approved and they work and they kill what they say on the label. If you've not had a success with them, it's because the customer has not applied them properly yet. So, you've done the bed, now you do the same treatment in the rest of the room. So you look at all the skirtings. Wherever the skirting board meets the wall and there's a gap, that's where a bed bug can come out. If there's wallpaper on the walls and the wallpaper's turned up a little bit at the corner, that's where a bed bug can hide. CD cases, down the spine of the CD case, down the spine of the book, inside the pages of the book. Take out a drawer from your bedside table, turn it over on the underside of the drawer. On the wall, on the pictures on the walls, take them off and have a look on the back of the picture, that's where bed bugs can hide. On a light switch, take the panel off the front of the light switch and, and electrical sockets, that's where bed bugs can hide. If you're, using, if you're going to treat around electrical fittings, you only use a dusting pan, you don't spray with the, the liquids. Electrical hazard. Any piece of furniture in a bedroom can harbour bed bugs. They can hide in clothing, they can hide in laundry baskets, they can hide in floorboards, underneath floorboards, in pillows, and in pillowcases. 
You tell the customer to take all the bedding off the bed and wash it on a hot wash at 60 degrees plus. That will kill the bugs. You spray the mattress with Protector C. You dust all the cracks and crevices. You spray all the soft furnishings in the room. You fumigate with a 45 p fumer. That will get bed bugs under control if you do it right. If you do it half-heartedly, you won't get it under control. Okay, so that's what I said. It's not a quick fix. Difficult to get under control, but you have to be diligent and you have to do it correctly. Um, what are the telltale signs of bed bugs? How can you, you know, tell if it's bed bugs or fleas that you've got? It's a good question. There are some telltale signs that tell you whether you've got bed bugs or fleas. With bed bugs, you might want to look for things such as the, the bite. When you wake up in the morning, you've got a lump on you or a welt. Um, you've got something that's causing you a problem at night. It might not be obvious from the start, but it's bed bugs, fleas, or it could be mosquitoes that have bitten you. Um, if you look on the bed sheets, you will often see a speck of blood. And this is because a bed bug injects an anticoagulant into your, uh, into your skin to stop the blood from setting as it's sucking it out of you. When it withdraws its proboscis from your skin and crawls off, because it's had enough of its feed, you then still bleed a little because of the anticoagulant. And that then leaves on, uh, can be a, a stain on your sheets. The second one is, if you take the bedding off and have a look around the top edge of the mattress, we usually wear a cord is on the top of the edge of the mattress, and pull it back, you'll see black spots. Now that is the fecal matter that is left behind by, by the bed bug. Um, if you smear it, it generally smears like fecal matter. And usually this is collected in one particular place. So you'll see a, an area which has got all these black spots in it. Um, there might be several of these because there could be several different bed bugs in the room. Um, you can pick up bed bugs sitting on a bus. You can go into a hotel room on holiday, put your bag down in the wardrobe, pick it up when you're coming home, put your clothes in and, and take them home with you. Uh, if you know, you've got students who go on these gap years and travel around and stay in youth hostels in Australia, great place for them to, to pick up bed bugs. Um, <clears throat> you, you can pick them up on the train, as easy as putting your handbag down, the crawl from the guys, turn up these trousers into your handbag you carry them away with you. Everybody can have them. You don't have to have a dirty house to have bed bugs. Nothing to do with dirt whatsoever. They live in clean environments. They suck blood. That's all they need is human to live on. Or any other. They don't have to be humans. They can live on dogs and cats. Okay. Are bed bugs just on a bed? Nope. You can have bed bugs on your settee. You can have them anywhere in your house. They generally are attracted to the bed area because that's where you sleep and because of the activities of bed bugs so they come out at night when you're asleep in this circadian rhythm where they live the opposite to what you do that's why you have them around the bed what are the guarantees that this product will work and get rid of my problem you have to go through lengthy trials to prove what you're saying on that label does actually work you won't get the registration until you can prove it. And the trials are done by independent companies, not by Agrofarm, not by people who make it, not by you who sell it, but by independent companies who are approved and registered with the government. Once that approval has gone through, you then apply for a registration for your product and then it can be done. If you make a claim on the label, it has to be justifiable. You cannot make any claims that are non um, true. So therefore, customer that's saying that the product hasn't killed or hasn't got rid of his bed bug infestation, it's more likely that he hasn't applied the products in the right manner or the right places to get it under control and uh, treat properly. Fumigate first, followed by the spray, followed by the dust. You need to do all three things. You need to open up all the cupboards, open up all the uh, drawers of the divan, stand up the beds if you can. Um, take out as much stuff from the drawers so you can turn them over and let the chemicals get to the places where they have to work. Most, the, the most common problem, really the only problem that you 
going to have if you get a customer phone up and say, I don't think it works because I've still been bitten, mm -hmm. is because the application wasn't done properly. Okay. The chemicals work, they have to work to get the license. Uh, an HSC approval will only come about if you can prove that it does what you put on that label. You cannot make false claims, you, you, you're just not allowed to do it and you, your uh, HSC registration and the approval process it goes through has to have independently verified data to substantiate what you're saying on that label claim. So when we say that it, uh, permethrin in the dusting powder kills dead bugs, it's because it does. Cypermethrin kills and the fumes kill. Okay, that can all be proven. So if a customer comes back and says that's rubbish, it doesn't work, that is not true. It's because he hasn't applied it to all the places where the bed bugs are. How can I prevent a reinfestation? If you've got uh, a treatment that you've done, depending on the level of that infestation and how severe it was, where it was, and how you treated it will determine on whether or not you're going to have to do a retreatment. Okay. If it's a really severe infestation or you get a second hatching of eggs, then yes, you are likely to have to have a retreat. And it's not always practical to have a one-shot, completely controlled environment where you've got rid of your infestation of whatever it is, be it bed bugs, ants, fleas, cockroaches, silverfish, carpet beetle, clothes moth, any of those, you can always get a reinfestation. And like you've got the original infestation, you can always get a new infestation. Then might go a retreat for a follow-up or a retreat of a, an existing infestation. It could be a new infestation altogether. If you live in a block of flats, for example, and you treat your flat for bed bugs, and you kill all the bed bugs you had, it is very easy for them to come from neighboring flats, above, below, side by side, back into your place. And once the level of efficacy of the products you put down is cleared, you can get a new infestation. It might look to you like they've come back, but they're actually a new new set of insects that have come back into your place. Um, <clears throat> How soon after treatment can the room be used or slept in? Well, for bed bugs, and if you're doing the whole three treatments, the treatment for fumigation is two hours, with the room closed off. One hour to aerate the room, it is safe to sleep in that night. And you don't have to leave town for a month after you've done the treatment. The spray, once you've done the spray, if you um, wait till it's dry, you can make the bed again. Okay, so that's, that's as long as one. These things are really safe to be around. Does the treatment smell? Does it leave a residue? Protector C is the one that really we're going to talk about here, and Protector P for that matter, don't have smells. They don't leave smells behind, they don't stain, they're safe to use on soft furnishings. You would always recommend that the customer checks first on a piece of fabric out of way or out of sight that it doesn't leave any marks. It contains water. Water will stain some fabrics, such as velvets and leathers. So you would obviously make a test first to make sure it's safe. But it won't, shouldn't normally stain, doesn't smell, is safe to use around pets and children. Okay. Does it leave a residue? Well, the synthetic pyrethroids, protect C and protect V, yes, that's the purpose of them. They leave residues behind. That's what kills the insects long term. The natural products, the pyrethrins, protect a natural insect killer, protect a natural aerosol, they don't leave residues because that's the purpose of them. They're a quick knockdown and kill, but no residue. 